In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning. So today we heard the gospel of the man born blind. Uh, and one of the things that we as Christians, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Our faith is not based on miracles. No, it's, our, our, it's, it's based, our, 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 what we believe in is based on faith. So we're going to talk about Romans 11 today. And for us to discuss Romans 11, there's some words that we kind of want to talk a little bit about to kind of, so when we read Romans 11, Romans 11 is a very powerful chapter. I love one of my favorite chapters is Romans 11 because there's key things and where St. Paul kind of reveals mysteries in, in, that, uh, in that real a glimpse, give us a glimpse of mysteries. So one of the things that we, we're going to talk about trees. We're going to talk, the Romans 11 talk a lot about the, the cultivated olive tree and then a wild olive tree uh, and one of the things that they will that we will read is that there is going to be a branch from the wild olive tree will be cut off and then grafted into the origin to the to the cultivated olive tree what is grafting that's the first word grafting is when you like you take a a a a, 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 a twig or or a branch from one tree and take it to another live tree and slide the side a little bit and then insert it inside and put it in. And eventually, that little twig that you took from another tree will become part of this tree and incorporated in the tree and it will get its fruit, its sap, and, and it'll, it'll get its life and food from that tree. So what is grafting? It's basically a twig that is inserted into a slit on the trunk of a living plant from which it receives sap. And then all of a sudden you're going to find as time progresses, that little grafted branch will be incorporated in the tree and it will get its food from the original tree and it becomes part of the tree. So this is grafting, okay? So let's talk a little bit what, what we, I'm going to give you, a, you know, just an, I'm sure we all heard it in the first reading today. In the, in the book of Romans, from Romans 11, it talks about the olive tree. So what is this olive tree? Basically, when St. Paul is talking about the olive tree, he's talking about the nation Israel. Israel, the people. God's people, God's children throughout the Old Testament. These were the chosen people. And, and, and who is their patriarch? Is Abraham. And you look at the roots of that olive tree. Uh, which is which is God's people in the Old Testament, which is the church in the New Testament. We'll get to it. But this this tree, the roots of it is Abraham, the fathers, the patriarch of the church, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that tree, that or that 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 that, that tree is really Israel. And one of the things you're gonna find on the tree, there is broken branches. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the sense that these broken branches is that Israel believed in God. Throughout the time in the Old Testament, they, they were monotheistic, they, they worshipped God, they, they theocratic, theocratic in the sense that they, 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 they God was the ruler for them. And, and then when Christ the Messiah came, they rejected Him, they did not believe. So here, this, re this is reflected in the broken branches, that Israel believed in God, but then they rejected the Messiah in the sense the broken branches. We're going to make sense more out of it when we read Romans 11. So this is Israel, the, the, the cultivated olive tree. And then he talks about another olive tree. The other olive tree, it's a wild olive tree. It's a wild olive tree. And that wild olive tree that we're going to realize today, that when, when St. Paul is comparing and talking about this, is that this is the Gentiles. So in the old days, it's basically either an Israelite, or a, and if, any, if you're not an Israelite, then you're a Gentile. So there were two, two people, uh, the God, you know, the God's people, the chosen people, and then the Gentiles, which is the wild olive tree. <clears throat> So let's go a little bit more details. I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain it to you a little and then we're gonna read Romans 11. So this original olive tree, which is Israel, which is God's people, the Israelites, who are, their father is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is, that is the original uh, tree. Today, that tree is the church. The church is that tree, okay? And, our, and, and we are children of Abraham by faith. So, 
in the new church, where, which is the New Testament now, the Israelite and the Gentiles can actually become part of the tree by believing in Christ. Those who believe, so if an Israelite believes in Christ, he is part of that tree, he's naturally part of the tree, but also if he doesn't believe, then it's a broken branch. And then if he believes, he becomes part of that, 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 that body, the, the church, or the, the tree, the, olive, the cultivated olive tree. Also now, when the New Testament, even a Gentile, you and I are, we're all, we, you know, most of us sitting here are Gentiles because we're not, you know, so we're actually, we're grafted into that tree. We're grafted into that tree, which is the church. So through our faith in Christ, we're being grafted. That's like that we were part of that wild olive tree. And because we believe and we faith, we have faith in Christ, because that's, that's to be part of that olive tree, the cultivated olive tree. Now you ought to be grafted. So here you see a picture of this olive tree now, which is the church where we have many types of branches. There is natural branches. In other words, Israelites that believe, like for instance, St. Paul. St. Paul was, a, was, was an Israelite. He believed. A lot of the disciples, they were Israelite. They were, and there is still part of the church today that are Israelite. But then there is also Gentiles in the sense that they were from the wild olive tree. They were grafted into this olive tree. And then also, there is also some time that's going to come, and we're going to read it in a little bit, that some of these broken branches that, that were part of the natural olive tree that broke off because of unbelief, there's going to be a time that's going to come where these natural branches that through unbelief broke off, they will also be grafted in the tree again, part of that tree again. And we'll see that. And, and then St. Paul says, can you imagine? Because... You know, with, with, through the fall of, or, or the rejection of Israel to the Messiah, that opened the door to Gentiles to be grafted. For that, that opened the door for us to be grafted. But, and then that was a source of blessing because now there is Christians all over. But there is going to be a time that's going to come, even the branches, that some of the branches that broke off through unbelief, they will believe and they will be regrafted. they will be grafted in that tree as well. So this tree has natural branches, which is the Israelite. These, there, there's some broken branches, those who did not believe in the Messiah. There's wild branches, which came from the wild olive tree that were grafted in that tree. And then there is broken grafted. In other words, the, the, the one point they broke off, they did not believe. But eventually the time going to come where they will be grafted in that tree again. What's the participation to become of that olive tree? I, I know it's really deep and it might be confusing. But there's a point that we're going to make at the end. So one of the, the, the main thing that, that to participate in that tree is your faith. But you believing in Christ, that makes you part of the church, makes you part and you're able. And how do you show your faith? It's by dying with Christ and rising again in his baptism, in the baptism. So believers are becomes now anybody that anybody in that tree, whether it's a wild or the natural or the broken tree, you become part of that tree by faith. And all of a sudden, because of your faith, Abraham is our father by faith. In other words, that we become the seed of Abraham, not by, by genealogy, it's by faith. Whoever believes in Abraham, because Abraham believed in the Messiah and he had the promise of God. And, and we will also inherit because we become children of Abraham by faith. And that tree, which is the church, provides nourishment for all the, for all the branches, whether it's natural or a wild branch. Okay? So... And, and I just wanted to kind of highlight the fact that the, 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 the broken branches at the bottom, the broken branches is going to come one day where that broken branches on the bottom will be regrafted in that tree. So I hope that kind of give you some perspective on what we're going to read. So the first thing is, if you were listening, you know, carefully in the Catholic epistle today, it says this, we're going to go really take a small part of the Catholic epistle, but we're going to focus on Roman 11. In the, in the Catholic epistle, it says this, He who believes in the Son of God, faith. He who believes in the Son, it's not by sight, it's by faith. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made God a liar, has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given to his Son. And this is the testimony. What is the testimony? That God has given us eternal life in this life and his Son. 
In other words, we, we reach eternal life through the Son. That is the promise. And then it says that he who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And then, it, you know, the last portion of the, the, the first gospel, basically we're focusing here is belief, not faith, not by sight. In verse 13, it says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. In Christ, steadfast in that tree, you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. In other words, this is the important point, that if we're from the wild olive tree, we're grafted into the cultivated olive tree. And if one day comes and I don't believe, that's the, I become part of the broken branches again. So here it says that to believe, to continue, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You know, one of the things that the priest prays, keep us in your faith unto the end, that we're strong in the faith till the last breath. So let's go to Romans 11, and, and hopefully that the, the, the illustration at the beginning of the trees would make more sense, because probably year after year we read this chapter, and we may not know. So in light of what we, we saw about the trees, let's read through it really fast. I'm going to go a little bit earlier in the sense that it, the, 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 the reading today started in verse 8, but we're going to start one. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to just read excerpts. Romans 11. <clears throat> I say then, this is St. Paul speaking. He's saying, I say then, has God cast away his people? Did God get rid of all his people? The, 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 get rid of all the, the, the tree of Israel? Certainly not. This is St. Paul. St. Paul, Paul is an Israelite. He says, No. He did not, you know, when, when, when Israel did not believe, he did not get rid of all these people. There were still some believers in there. And he's telling you, I am one of them. For I also, I am an Israelite, part of the cultivated olive tree, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And then he says, God has not cast away his people. God does not cast away his people. Why? Because he foreknows them. He knew you. He knew you because you, you're part of the elect when you accepted the Lord as your Savior and baptized with Him and rose in the, in the baptism. You, you become part of the elect and God knows you by name and he, you're, 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 you're part of the elect people. So God doesn't forget His people. And He always have remnants. Even in the original cultivated olive tree, there were still some people they refer to as remnant where they still believe in Christ. And then it goes on, it says, or do you not know? And he's going to, now St. Paul is going to bring something from the Old Testament where a prophet believed that every, all the believers died. No more believers. And then he prayed, he says, Lord, I'm the only one that believe in you. And God answers him and goes, no. There are 7,000 people inside of Israelite that did not bow to, uh, to an idol. And here we see it. Or do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel saying, Lord, they've killed all your prophets and torn down your altars. And I alone am left and they seek my life. He thought that he was the only believer. But the reality, God answers in verse 4, it says, no. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved remnant, remnant. I have reserved from myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. In other words, this is, there is still a group that part of that, that original grafted tree. And then in 11.5, he says this, Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. God always have a remnant that believes in Him throughout all ages, and that's the remnant, and it's, it happens by grace. In other words, we're saved by grace, not by works. Israel, one of the problems that Israel wanted to do is that he wanted to win it to works. You know, the Pharisees basically was looking at the rituals, the letter of the law, but not the spiritual. And, and the reality is it's not by works. We're saved by grace. And then once I'm saved by grace, I ought to show that salvation by my works, by the way I live, the way I deal with people. Keep in mind, we're going through this. There's one point that I wanna, we want to take away from the end that I hope that, that, that is, is powerful for all of us because I, I, it's very powerful for me at least. And then in verse 6 it says, And if it's by grace, it is no longer works. Israel was doing focusing on works. And it's not by works, it's by grace. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. And then in verse 7 it says, What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, salvation, but the elect 
have obtained it and the rest were blinded. What does that mean? What does that mean? So what Israel was seeking, the salvation, or the, for the waiting for that Messiah, somehow, we're going to read a little, it's that they were blinded. They did not see the Messiah. But then when they rejected Christ, there's good that came out of it. In the sense that Gentiles started believing and coming to be part of that. So it's here, it says the elect. This is those who believe, the elect. But the elect have obtained it and the rest were blinded. Just like, you know, why the gospel today is the man born blind. Just as it's written, God has given them a spirit of stupor. Eyes that should not see. Eyes that should not see. And ears that should not that they should not hear to this very day. What 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 St. Paul is saying here that Israel somehow were blinded. They see the Messiah, but they, they, they it's, it's called the spirit of stupor. Like another, in other words, like today. A man born blind, Christ comes and heals him. And no one has heard anyone that was born blind that was healed before. But what did Israel say? No, 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 he's not the Messiah. They rejected him. Even though to any common sense that there's got to be something special about him. Because no one has opened the eye of a man born blind. And that's the spirit of stupor. So uh, basically they were, they were kind of blinded. And it says here something interesting to this very day. And then in verse 11 it says, I say then that they stumbled that they, they, they should fall? In other words, God just wanted them to fall? Certainly not. There is a mystery that God, how God works. It says that, but through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. And, and through whatever that might have been evil, oh, they crucified Christ, the, the religious leaders and all that. But then that opened the door for Gentiles. The good that God is able to, cut, to bring come out of, out of some what we look at as, as evil. Romans 11, 12, it says, Now, if their fall is riches to the world. In other words, when they fell, it was riches to the world in the sense that we brought salvation. And their failure became riches for the Gentiles. Become, became rich because we became part of the cultivated olive tree. And we're drinking and eating from that sap of that, that tree, which is our father Abraham by faith. How much more their fullness... We'll get to that. It's going to be clear what does that mean. And then it goes on. It says, For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world. In other words, when these broken branches were a cause for reconciliation from the world and getting this wild olive tree grafted in the, in the body of Christ, how much their acceptance be life from dead? In other words, this is very powerful in that sense. In the sense that if... They fell and they rejected the Messiah, broken branches, and then grafted branches came and became part of the, the Gentiles became part of the tree. And how much more when these branches believe and they become part of the tree, how much more? It's basically saying here, it's just going to be like acceptance, but by, by, like life from dead, life from dead. In other words, there will be life from dead. And then verse 17, we, we're hearing it. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. In other words, when we're grafted, now we are partaker of the fatness of this olive tree. And it says that, what are you going to say? What will you say? Branches were broken off that I may be grafted in? And he says, yes, it's okay, be careful. Yes, you can, you can be proud that you're grafted in, but be careful that you always have that faith, because the participation is by faith. And in verse 20, it says, well said, that yes, branches broke off and that enabled me to be, as a Gentile, to be grafted in. Well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. In other words, you were grafted in because of your faith. Do not be haughty. No, don't be, you know, don't, 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 you know, be haughty. Oh, I am believing. And then one day you stop believing. And then Romans 11, 21, he says, for if God did not spare the natural branches and they fell off, He may not spare you either. In other words, that God, through unbelief, did not spare the branch, the natural branches, and they broke off. You as a grafted, you got to be careful and you have to be strong in the faith and steadfast in the faith because if you stop that faith, you will be part of that broken, fast, uh, broken branches as well. Therefore, consider the goodness 
and the severity of God. And those who fell, severity. But towards you, goodness, because we were grafted in. If you continue in his goodness, in other words, if you continue in the faith, you'll be part of that. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. You know, if you stop that faith and not having that faith in God, you will also be cut off. And if you were cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are naturally branches be grafted into their olive tree, into their own olive tree. In other words, basically what St. Paul is opening a mystery to us, there is one day that's going to come where these broken olive branches from the natural tree, from the Israelite, will be grafted into that original olive tree. And if, if the, that tree accepted wild branches, how much easier will it take its natural branches? For if I, I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, it's a mystery. And God is, and St. Paul is opening a mystery of how God works. God always brings good out of what might seem evil. Oh, Israelite rejected Christ and they, they crucified him. Or, you know, they saw the miracle today of the man born blind and they don't believe. But there is, there is you know, there, God is able, it's a mystery how God, how God works. He says here, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery, lest you should be wise lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So there is going to be a time basically that, that, that broken branches are still going to be blinded and still unbelief until enough of the Gentiles are grafted into that tree. So one of, what's the takeaway? Why did we go over there? The fact that we are Christians and we're grafted in a tree was caused because one point, the, the branches from the original olive tree did not accept the Messiah and that allowed us in. So through their unbelief, we became believers. And this is good that comes out of evil. And a lot of times we don't understand some things that happen in the world. There are some things that happen in the world, but we ought to trust that God has his ways and it's a mystery. It's a mystery. That God brought us to Christianity, but through the fall of Israel, and you know, Christ was crucified and was betrayed, but then we, we got salvation. And you know, if you look at, if you're standing in the foot of the, cro of the foot of the cross, why, Lord, you're allowing the Son? Well, because we get salvation, and it's a mystery. So, reality is, and it says here, let's read it for, and so all Israel will be saved, and as it's written, deliverance will become out of Zion. Uh, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for my covenant is with, the, with, with them, with Israel. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have known, obtained mercy through their disobedience. We got mercy because they were disobedient. Even so also here have, have now been disobedient that through mercy. It's, it's very deep. I'm not going to go through because I'm gonna, we're going to go to the point. For God has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all. God allowed that, you know, that, that stip, spirit of stupor in order for have mercy on all where everyone was able to be part of the olive tree. So this is the original olive tree, which is Israel. Uh, it had natural branches, which is the Israelites. Uh, broken branches, which were the, those so Israelites that became unbelieving. And then came a wild olive tree and that part of that olive tree was grafted in place of these broken branches, the natural broken branches. And then one day is gonna come, these broken branches that, that, that were broke off, off of unbelief, will be grafted again. So the reality is when we read Romans 8, 28, we know all things work for good to those who love God. Even the things that look like bad, they would, they, they're able to look, God is able to draw good out of it. So last Sunday, as we're leaving, a lot of us were, were, went into a surreal moment. We walked out in the church and, and I've seen, you know, some of our children are tearing and, and they, when they heard, you know, Kobe and, and, and his daughter departed in a, in, a, in a helicopter accident. And it was hard, very hard for us to, to you know, to consider, you know, well, how did this happen? And, and I'm sure this is, this is a, a sensation throughout everyone that knows. You know, how did this happen? You know, he's young, he's, he's famous, he's, you know, there, he has a lot of good attributes. And, and we wonder, and, and a lot of our children are trying to process, how, you know, why, Lord? Why did you allow this? And, and what good can come out of it? 
And it's important for us to see, you know, like even when the Old Testament, the, yes, the, the disobedience on the tree branches, but that brought good in the sense that the Gentiles were able to be part of the, the church. So God is able to bring good out of things. The reality that we have is that we live in a fallen world. That world has sickness. That world have accidents. That world have doctor diagnosis that, may, that we will not like. That world will, will have, uh, you know, devastations, earthquakes. It's a fallen world and we need to accept that. And the reality is, is that we're all going to depart. We're all going to come a point where we will be going back home. And the reality is, is that everyone has a different life in the sense that someone could, you know, his mission is he will go back home very young uh, once he's done with his mission. And someone else might live for a very long time to fulfill his mission. But God has ways and it's a mystery. And it's, you know, be careful that you don't try, oh God. So, what, 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 one of the goods that sometimes that can come out of evil. One of the things that I read yesterday, or, you know, there's a lot of, it, there's a lot of feelings and emotions that, and life changing things when, when I heard of this, this surreal, surreal moment. You know, this is one of the reactions of some of the people that, that I just chose. Here he's saying, you know, this is, this is a person, uh, I, I don't know even who it is, but it's one of, uh, there's a lot of reactions. It says that your transition, the transition from this world, he's talking to Kobe, your transition has really put things in perspective for me and has made me really appreciate my family, appreciate myself and appreciate everything and everyone that I show any type of affection towards. So here, you know, this, yes, it might looks evil, but God has a mystery in the sense that it changed somebody, that it made him reevaluate and re, you know, take a new perspective in life. And not only that, but it says that, he goes on and he says, it has also made me reach out to certain people who I am, who I may be on good, who I may be on good, bad terms with. Somebody that they were in bad terms with, he reached out to them. With apolog and apologize for whatever I have done to them and patch things up. And I hope that everyone in the world follows suit because no argument or ill words or confrontation is worth being your last encounter with someone. And, and there, the good that can come out of it, we don't, it's a mystery. God works in mysteries and we saw that in the Old Testament. We saw it in the Olive Tree. Could it be that maybe, you know, one of the influence on somebody today that maybe didn't believe in God, but the second that maybe he looked up to Kobe and one of the things that he realized that he believes in God. Could that have an impact on somebody that is young that I would look up for Kobe, that now he changes his life and looks up and if Kobe you know, believed in God, I need to look at my salvation as well. Maybe the impact that when he hears that, you know, maybe I'm, I'm very lazy going to church and he hears that Kobe before the helicopter ride was at 7 a.m. was early in the, in the church and he prayed and he met the, the, the priest on the way out. Could that make an influence on somebody that maybe is far from the church or not praying regularly? That even though he's a famous and he has all these schedules, but he made it a point on the Lord's day he was at church. Could that be a, a, one of the good that can come out of it? How about maybe a father that is not a very good father? And he sees how he was, he was with a lot of, with his children and he was coaching his girls. Could that be an influence on somebody that looked up for Kobe and the world in the basketball court, but now he looks at it from that perspective and changes life and become a good father? Could it be that when he sees that family, you know, of a husband and wife and there was a fallout and, and they would forgive and they were persistent in that marriage that this is a marriage, it's a covenant and I'm not going to let go of that and I'm going to work hard on my marriage. And when he sees that, could that be an influence on some of us that are married and, and, and want to make it a point, yes, I might fall out, but I'm going to forgive and I'm going to be persistent on being married and loving my spouse unconditionally. Could it be something like maybe someone is not, you know, is, is very lazy and then he, he hears one of the things you keep hearing, work ethics, work ethics. That's one of the things he, everyone, oh, work ethics. Maybe someone doesn't have work ethics and when he sees, when he's looking up for, to the school and he says that, oh, you know what, I need to work on the work ethics. And, and then realize that it's all driven, that he was a man of faith and he was strong in his faith. So God is able to bring good out of evil. 
And, and it's important for us, and it's a mystery. It's a mystery why God does things and He allows things in this world, but it's a mystery. So we see that God is able to draw good. Our God who loves us and cares for us is able to draw good out of whatever evil situation that we encounter or whatever evil situation that we may hear. And it's important to understand that and to always look at the good. What lesson am I going to take from that? Am I ready to go back home? Am I reconciled? So instead of focusing and judging and saying, Oh, why, Lord, did you do that? Well, God has mysteries. And we saw that in, in the Old Testament. And we saw it in the now part of the church is because, you know, the, the, the rejection of Israel was the cause of the Gentiles to be part of the church. So there is good that able to come out of evil. So we pray that God will help each one of us to be grafted strong in that tree and, and, and have that strong faith because and, and, and all to the last uh, breath of our life and all the glory be to our God forever. Amen.